Today I'm going to be showing you how to crochet this gorgeous moss stitch shawl. Now I'm going to show you how to do the very basic triangle itself and then as an optional extra I'm going to show you how I finished off with just a few rounds of stitches around the entire thing to give it a nice neat finish. Now for my personal shawl here on the table I used seven balls of Lion Brand Landscapes in the colour Coral Reef with a six and a half millimetre crochet hook. You can, of course, use any yarn and any hook size that you so wish. To begin, I'm going to start with a magic ring. Now, if you absolutely detest the magic ring, you can substitute this out for chaining four and then joining with a slip stitch to the very first chain you made to create a little ring that you can work your stitches into. So form your magic ring or your chain loop and then chain one. Into this magic ring, we're going to work two single crochets. That's one, two, chain two, one, two, and two single crochets back into the magic ring. Now don't tighten up your magic ring just yet. The first few rows of this moss stitch shawl can be a little bit confusing and you don't want tight stitches just for the first few rows. So we're just going to leave the magic ring as is just for a little bit. So for row two, you're going to chain one and flip your work, just turn it around. And then into that very first single crochet stitch where you just chained from, work two single crochets. So straight into that stitch, that's one and two. Now chain one, skip a stitch, and we're going to work into the chain two space. So this is why it's easier if your magic ring is still a bit loose. You can see your chain two space there. So we're skipping that next single crochet and into the chain two space, you're going to work one single crochet, chain two, one single crochet back into that chain two space. This is going to form the spine of your shawl. Now, if you want to, Grab a stitch marker and pop it into that chain two space just so it's really easy to identify for the next few rounds. After a while you won't need it but just for these first few rows it's worth it. Okay now we're going to chain one, skip a stitch and into this very last stitch of the row work two single crochets right into that end stitch here. We work two single crochets. So that's one, two. So you can see it doesn't look like much now. Trust the process. For row three, chain one and turn your work. Again, into that very first stitch of the row, ignore your chain one. Into that very first stitch, work two single crochet stitches. So that's one, that's two. Then chain one, skip a single crochet and find your chain one space from the row below. If you rotate your work, you'll see the little Vs. This first V is your single crochet. This second one is your chain. And this next one is a single crochet. So you want to spot the place in between your single crochet stitches and into that chain one space work a single crochet. Chain one and we'll be back to our chain two place that you marked with a stitch marker. Or if you didn't you'll be there anyway don't worry. <laughs> and into the chain two space work one single crochet, chain two, 
and one single crochet back into that same space. Then again, mark your chain two space if you wish. That way you'll know when we come back around, that's your chain two space. Now working back down the side, chain one, skip your stitches and work into the chain one space in between them. So you've got a single crochet, chain one, and then two single crochets here. Into the chain one space, work your single crochet, chain one, and then you'll be right at the end, you'll have two stitches left into this very last stitch, work two single crochet stitches. That's one, and that's two. Now at this point, you can go ahead and tighten up your magic ring, and you'll see we're forming a little triangle shape. For row four, chain one and turn. Now into that very first single crochet you made, work two single crochet stitches. One, two. Now up the sides, we're going to chain one and work a single crochet into the chain one space in between your stitches. So straight into that gap in there, work a single crochet, chain one, find your next chain one space and work a single crochet into it. Chain one and we'll be up to your chain two space. So this is the little spine of your shawl and into that chain two space we're going to work one single crochet, chain two, and one more single crochet. Again, if you want to mark that chain two spot, go ahead. And then working back down the other side, chain one, single crochet into the chain one space. So you're skipping these stitches entirely and just working straight into the gaps in between them. Chain one, single crochet into the chain one space, chain one, and then to end, you'll have two stitches left, one, two, work two single crochets into that very last stitch. So skip a stitch and work two single crochets into this very last stitch. One and two. So that is the pattern repeat row, and we are going to repeat this over and over until the shawl is the size that you want it to be. I'll recap it now. You're going to chain one, turn your work, and work two single crochets into that very first stitch. One, two. And then working up the side towards your chain two space over here, into chain one, single crochet into the chain one space. Chain one, single crochet into the chain one space. We're going to do this all the way up until you have run out of chain one spaces to work into. Then once you have run out of chain spaces, you can see I didn't mark my um, chain two spot very well here. This is actually the chain two here. I only got one loop of it. But once you have run out of chain one spaces to work into, chain one and into the chain two space, which will be at the top point of your shawl here, work one single crochet, chain two, and one single crochet, all into the same place. Then mark that chain two spot And then coming back down the other side, chain one, single crochet into the next chain one space. Chain one, single crochet into the chain one space. Do that all the way down until you have run out of chain one spaces to work into. Then when you have reached the very end and you've got no more chain spaces, we're going to chain one, 
and into that very last stitch, work two single crochets. One and two. Let's recap that again really quickly. Chain one and turn, work two single crochets into that very first stitch. One, two. Then up the side, we're going to work chain one, single crochet into the chain one space. Chain one, single crochet into the chain one space, all the way up until you have run out of chain one spaces to work into. Once you have run out of chain one spaces up the side, you'll be at your chain two central spine. So chain one if you haven't already, and into that chain two space, work one single crochet, chain two, one single crochet. Mark that chain two space if you want to, you don't have to. And then coming back down this other side, chain one, single crochet into the next chain one space. Chain one, single crochet into the next chain one space. Repeat this until you have run out of chain one spaces to work into. Then when you reach the very end, chain one if you haven't already, skip a stitch and work two single crochets into that very last single crochet of the row. Keep repeating that last row back and forth until your shawl is the size that you want it to be. I'm going to go ahead and crochet up a few more rows to make a small little triangle and then I'll show you how I crocheted my little mini border around it but again, that is totally optional. You could just leave it raw edged like this. So meet me back here in just a moment when your shawl is the size that you want it to be. So I'm just finishing up the last couple of stitches. There we go. And now my shawl is the size that I want it to be. Now you can leave it at this point. That's absolutely fine. And if you wanted to do that to finish off your very final stitch, you would chain one, cut your yarn, leaving an end to weave in, so snip your yarn. And then you would simply pull that loop all the way through the chain, pull it tight and you're good to go. However, let me just undo that chain. If you wanted to do what I have done, which is put on just a few rounds of single crochet stitches, just to make sure it has a nice sturdy edging all the way around, then I'm gonna show you how I did that now. Now you can use these single crochet rows as a base to add a more elaborate border to your finished shawl if you so wish, but I left mine with just the sort of the three straight rows. So for your border, once you have finished your very last stitch, you're going to chain two and work a single crochet back into that exact same stitch where you worked your other two single crochets. Then grab a stitch marker and again, pop a stitch marker into that chain two space just so it's easily recognizable when you come back around. Now for these corners and the stitches we're about to do, if you find that it is all pulling in a bit too tight, feel free to chain three instead of two on your corners, or maybe add in a couple of extra stitches along the way. That way, if it's, if it's too tight, add some extra stitches or chains just to give yourself that slack back. Now the reverse applies if you find that you're getting too many stitches and your edges are waving and ruffling, 
then reduce the amount of stitches you are putting in along this bottom edge. There is no set stitch count because everybody's shawl will be different, but feel free to just tweak it for your own personal tension if you find things are pulling in too much or ruffling out too much. For me, I found just one single crochet in the end of each row was enough to keep my shawl straight. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Just one single crochet. I think you can see my blue table shining through the little holes at the end of each row. Just single crochet evenly along this bottom raw edge. Now, as I say, if it's pulling in too tight, feel free to add another stitch in to where we just worked one or an extra chain. But just single crochet, just evenly down this raw edge until you get to your central ring, be it magic ring or your chain four loop that you started with. So I'm just single crocheting along the edge here. So you can see it's not pulling in too much. It's not pulling, it's not ruffling. It's just, it's just right for me personally. Feel free to adapt this for your personal tension. Once you reach your central ring section, be it the magic ring or your chain loop, we're just going to cross over this with one chain and then continue single crocheting back along that, that bottom edge of your shawl. That will just give you a tiny bit of slack for working over the central section. Keep single crocheting along this raw bottom edge. Now, once you get over to the other side, you'll have your two single crochets coming up. So this is the way you've been working up and back and forth. Work into that same spot, a single crochet. Then chain two and slip stitch to the very first single crochet of that round. Now, if you have added chains or added stitches, just make sure that if you added an extra stitch there at this side, that you do it again on this side. So we've just single crocheted along this raw bottom edge. Now chain one, turn your work and slip stitch back into that chain two that you just created. I'm just gonna slip stitch back in there. Then chain one and into this chain two space. Work a single crochet. Work one more single crochet. So we're starting with two. Chain two. And one more single crochet back into that chain two space. Again, you can mark your new chain two space with the stitch marker. We have here two single crochet, chain two, and then just one single crochet. Now we're going to single crochet in every stitch all the way back along this bottom raw edge. When you come to your chain one space where you straddled your central section here, work a single crochet into that chain one space. And then continue single crocheting into the top of all your single crochets from the row below. So you can see I'm now coming back along this raw edge. Once you hit your chain two 
space, take the marker out, and into this chain two space, work one single crochet, chain two, and then two single crochets just to turn this corner. As I say, feel free to adapt this. If you find two stitches is too many, just do one. It's very flexible. Work it to your personal tension. Just make sure that whatever you do in the corners is the same. <laughs> then we're going to work up the moss stitch side here. And you're going to single crochet into the top of every single crochet stitch. So we'll have two, one, two, and into each chain one space. So single crochet into the chain one space. Apologies for the noise of my stitch markers ruffling around on my table. And work a single crochet into the top of the single crochet stitch itself. So work one into the chain space and into the stitch. Work this all the way up. Then once you reach your chain to space, this middle spine of your shawl, we're just going to work what we've worked each time, which is one single crochet, chain two, one single crochet. And again, mark that chain two spot if you so wish. Then coming back down, work a single crochet into every stitch and chain one space back down along this moss stitch edge. Once we reach back over to this side over here, we're going to skip this where you slip stitch back in and just slip stitch to the first single crochet that you can easily spot. So it might be a little bit of a mess over here. Don't worry, identify the top of the first single crochet stitch, it's here. So here we've got where we turned and slip stitched. You can just skip right over all of that. Find the most identifiable stitch. Don't need to worry too much. Slip stitch in. Chain one and turn. Now, as you can see, mine's curving around a little bit. That's fine. Just tailor it to your tension and then Go back around again. Now on this next row, if you find that you've got a little bit of a curve here that you don't particularly like, like I currently have, when I come back to these two corners here, I will just work one single crochet, chain two, one single crochet. Or if you like the curve, you could extend it out and have it more of a crescent shape. As I say, totally customizable. We are just putting on a rigid edging to keep your triangle triangular shaped. So for this next round, just one single crochet, you can single crochet back into that stitch here, single crochet in every single stitch, and in the corners, all three corners, work one single crochet, chain two, one single crochet. Or if you find that's pulling in too much, you can alter that for two single crochet stitches, chain two, two single crochet stitches, alter it to however, <laughs> however you like but just putting on a very basic row of single crochets 
They don't need to be perfect. Just ensure that you're doing it evenly. No one will notice one stitch off by the time your shawl is finished. My chain two space, so one single crochet, chain two, one single crochet. Continue, single crochet into every stitch. Right, I've reached another corner here, another chain two space. This time round, I'm just going to work one single crochet, chain two, one single crochet, then single crochet into every single crochet from the row below. And again, when you get to the other corner, repeat this into the corner. So again, I've got a chain two space here, single crochet, chain two, single crochet, working my way back round to where we started this round. Now I've got a single crochet here, I've got space for one more here. Slip stitch to the very first stitch of your row. And now I'm happy with just this sort of narrow banding around mine. So I'm going to go ahead, chain one, cut my yarn, leaving a nice long tail to weave in, pull that up and pull that out. Now what you'll find as your shawl gets bigger is the weight of it will pull itself into shape. So you can see on this little tiny sample, it's not a perfect triangle here. It's curving round a little bit. That's fine. I'm quite happy with that. It doesn't bother me in the least. I could block it if I wanted to, but as I say, when your shawl is much bigger, the weight of it will pull itself out. Let me just show you on my actual shawl. So this is my big full shawl. You can see it's very big, it's very heavy, and my corners look like this. I added great big fat tassels to mine. Here is my central spine section. And yeah, your shawl will be huge, huge and heavy. And no one is going to notice any slight imperfection on these corners. So don't stress, just add stitches, just gives it a bit of rigidity and shape. It stops it from being too pulled out of shape as you are wearing it. I've been wearing this one quite a lot, as you can probably tell by all the cat hair in it but it does work up so quickly so beautifully and you get left with this really dense heavy shawl which quite frankly I can't get enough of. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial if you found it helpful please do give me a big thumbs up and until next time happy crocheting bye